Hello everyone, welcome to questions and answers based on the computational finance course. Uh, today we have question number seven, which is based on lecture number three. Uh, the question of today is, what sanity checks can you perform uh, for a simulated stochastic process? Uh, this question is related to, of course, practical exercises when you have a simulated a stochastic differential equation, where you have discretized um, stochastic differential equation, and you have performed simulation for pricing, then, of course, you may ask yourself, uh, what type of checks can I do to not maybe fully ensure whether my implementation is correct, but whether to get the confidence that what you have done makes sense. At least some sanity checks to make sure that you haven't made very obvious mistakes in your implementation. So for, to answer this question, there are multiple uh, steps that we can uh, take a look at. Uh, the first one is it rela it's related to particular asset class we are simulating. So for example, if we have a simulated uh, stock, uh, stock ST, uh, then simple check what we can do is that if we discount this stock, so it's a, a Martingale property, we know that the uh, uh, discounted asset class, uh, asset like stocks, uh, they have to be martingales. This means that expectation of ST over MT has to be equal to ST0, MT0. So this is a first simple check that you can do to check whether you have not make a very obvious mistakes. So here we would simulate our stock until the, uh, the maturity. So if we have here paths, basically you would take all those paths at the, at the expiry date uh, this will be a distribution, then you discount to today, and this has to be equal to the initial value uh, to um, initial value of your stock. Uh, of course, in reality, this would be not equal. It will be a slightly uh, some difference. Um, this difference, however, should be decreasing once you simulate more paths or you have decreased uh, the size of your uh, simulated grid. Uh, so this difference, is something that you should monitor and check whether um, your simulation improves if you improve, uh, if you in increase number of paths and decrease the discretization step. Uh, on the other hand, this difference between the left hand side and right hand side, you may use also to kind of correct your Monte Carlo paths such that this quality, this uh, qu quality, this quality will be always ensured. So this kind of a drift correction, you can call it, or Martingale correction term. Um, another um, um, aspect that you can think of, especially if we talk about deriv uh, derivative pricing, is whether your uh, derivative uh, can uh, be simplified. So, for example, if I have a call option and I choose strike equal to zero, then es essentially I will end up with problem number one. So this, this point is about checking whether your payoff is properly implemented. So we have already two points. And then, of course, stability uh, with respect to increased number of Monte Carlo paths and stability of a uh, change of the random seeds. So how much difference do you have if you repeat your simulation, but with a different random seed? This information is also very important because this means that if you run a simulation and your colleague, you may have completely different prices uh, because your seeds are different. And if that difference is very big, this suggests that the, very, the, the model that you have developed is very unstable. This may suggest that you may increase, you may need to increase number of Monte Carlo paths, for example. Uh, the another point is uh, how do results vary when changing the size of discretization of time steps? So this is something I have already uh, mentioned. Can you price back the market instruments? If you have performed simulation of your process with parameters that are calibrated to the market instruments, like for example, options, is your model calibrating back the options that you, that you have used to calibrate your model? So this is another criterion of checking whether your simulation uh, behaves well. If, for example, you have used market quotes to calibrate uh, model parameters, and then you perform Monte Carlo simulation, and the prices from your model versus the ones from the market are very uh, far apart, this means that the model cannot be used really in practice because uh, the hedges that trader would use, they'll be completely misallocated. Uh, for that reason, this is another sanity check that is good to have in your simulation. Uh, and of course, another one um, here, we cannot explain all type of sanity checks because these are only the obvious ones that we could have. Um, the another ones 
uh, may really correspond may correspond to the, the type of pricing contract you have. So, for example, if you have American option or Bermudan type of option, um, if you um, deal with uh, 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 exercise dates, then the option should also collapse to, for example, European type of payoff. So, depending on type of a payoff, always try to simplify it and see whether the base case scenario, for example, pricing of European type of options, whether it still works. If it doesn't, it's a red flag. It suggests that your simulation is unstable or you have a bug in your implementation. So this is basically kind of simple set of simple sanity checks that you can perform to check whether your Monte Carlo simulation is performing well and or acceptable for the purpose of your pricing. I hope it explains. See you next time.